Here's an interesting challenge in this renovation. Today I'm going to attempt to jack up this door frame and put it back into square. Hiya folks and welcome back to our 1920s renovation project. And we are up to an interesting stage in the renovation where we are just about ready to get the plasterer in to start replastering rooms. This room is pretty much ready to go. And before we do that, I want to make sure that any jobs that are potentially going to damage the plaster, damage the new plaster, are done. And there are various door frames, this one being one of them, uh, a prime example, that are massively out of level. I don't know if you can see it there, but if we bring that to level, it's pretty much an inch out over on the right hand side. And you can see where the door frame has dropped and we've got exactly the same problem on that door frame there. You can hopefully see it on the camera, but I can, <laughs> it's, it's blatant that it's very, very out of level and it's not something that you want to leave if possible because it looks awful. And again, let's have a look. Um, it's, believe it or not, it's not as out of level as the other one, but it, it's pretty bad. Uh, again, probably not quite an inch out over the length of the level, but not far off. So this door frame and the one directly opposite it needs some attention. And this is because down here the floor has dropped. And with anything like this, you need to try your best to work out the root cause first because there's no point in fixing this only for the problem to reoccur or maybe it's unearthed a more serious problem that needs addressed. One thing I'm quickly gonna check is the other door frames and you can pretty much tell they're not bad, that's fine. For an old house, I've seen a lot worse. And this one's fine, which is interesting because this one is right next to this one that's uh, massively out. The frames themselves, let's have a quick check. Uh, again, for an older house, not bad, not bad at all. What about plumb on this one? Plumb-wise, again, perfect, really. So it's, what's happened is, is that this left-hand leg of the door frame has dropped. And this is where you get into a little bit of amateur structural engineering. I have to say, if in doubt, consult a structural engineer, but I know this house intimately now, and I know pretty much where everything's running. So you can see there's a joist running across the floor here. Um, got a little notch in it here from cables but not a big enough notch to cause any serious problems and you can see the joist ends here and then we've got a new joist. It is technically nailed onto that other joist but there's a, a huge gap between the two so I would assume that nail isn't doing much and you can kind of verify that because down here if I tap the floor that is sitting on a solid wall that is a, I can tell that's made out of wood but I can also tell that that is sitting on brick underneath you kind of pick this stuff up from experience but uh, you can just tell it's solid underneath and if I go and show you I'll attempt to reverse without uh, falling down the stairs to show you what's going on so we've got a solid wall plate coming all the way along here that that joist is sitting on and if we reverse back here, ba, 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 ba. so you're imagining, imagine this wall basically. So we're, we're looking at this area and that joist is sitting on that. And if we come down here, downstairs, there is the wall in question. Uh, well, technically, technically there is the wall in question. We've got a nice big concrete lintel across the top, another big concrete lintel there, and then we get onto the structural wall that had dropped. But that structural wall that, had, well, it had, hadn't dropped, but the structural wall that wasn't supported by anything, uh, which I've made another video about. I'll include a link in the description to that video. But we're nowhere near the bit that wasn't supported, so it's nothing to do with this wall dropping. If this had been underneath, that joist I would have been more concerned because that would have meant that this entire wall downstairs and, and upstairs had dropped but it, it hasn't. So the wall in question 
is uh, basically, it's kind of this pillar here that that joist is sitting on. And one thing that I've already checked down here is, has this wall dropped? And it hasn't, but that goes all the way down to ground level. All of the door frames on the ground floor are perfectly level, so we've got nothing to worry about downstairs. So clearly, it's been a problem upstairs. And if I just reverse back again, so you can kind of get some context as to what we're dealing with. So, it's simply, down really it's down to this one individual joist and at that point I would be looking into things like has the joist rotted but we're on the first floor so it'd be unlikely that you're going to get rot in the joists on the first floor unless you've got woodworm or something but again if everything's dry it's unlikely that that's going to be the problem and that joist is absolutely solid and it's got a really nice bearing on that solid wall underneath so I think all that's happened really is that that joist has settled a bit, well, settled a lot over a hundred years or so. It's not really aided by the nugget who installed the bathroom in here, professional bathroom installation company. Once again, let me just shift some of this. So once again, the mark of consummate professionals who have notched a huge amount out of this joist but this isn't the problem joist the problem joist is that one over there but it's not going to particularly help matters that the joist adjacent to it has been notched out to that degree I mean that's like a two inch by six inch notch that they've taken out just for the waste of the shower which is tremendous that's another thing I'm gonna to have to sort out so that won't have helped matters but I don't think that's the root cause. I think this wall has probably dropped before this notch was even put in. It's just this has probably made it a little bit worse. And by the way, if you've been following this renovation from day one, that is what has caused this crack in this cinder block wall. It's not a supporting wall. I could technically take this wall out, but I'm just going to patch this up, strap it with some metal straps, and it shouldn't go anywhere. But what I would like to do is level out these door frames if I can. And what I'm gonna attempt to do, this doesn't always work, is that I'm going to uh, jack it up, just using a bog standard trolley jack, and we'll see if we can get it vaguely back into level, and then we'll put some new fixings in, glue it, and various other things, and we'll see if we can get this door frame vaguely back into level. Before we start, I've already kind of, I've got the architraves off and everything. Technically, I should probably take the door off because the door's going to need sorted out, but I'm leaving the door for the minute. But I have taken the architraves off. I've taken all the nails out. By the way, geez, the nails holding the architrave on. Crazy. Look at these nails. That's what was getting used to hold the architraves on. So I've taken all those out because I don't particularly want to be disturbing this too much once the walls all replastered and everything and I certainly won't be using nails like that to hold decorative trim on. So I've done all that and what I've also done, I've made sure that this existing gap at the top here is nice and clear because we need to have some room for the frame to move up into that gap. So all I've done is I've taken a scraper and scraped out any rubbish or anything like that out of that gap. So there's nothing kind of stopping the frame from moving up once, because this is a bit of a one hit. If this doesn't work, I don't know, you may never see this video, but uh, if it does work, then we'll have vaguely level door frames, which would be nice. So let's give it a try. I'm going to be very delicate with the jack. What I don't want to do is cause too much damage to this wall because it is only a cinder block wall and it's already not in the best of states. So I'm gonna jack it, but I'm gonna be careful. And if there's any signs of damage to this wall, then I'm gonna give up on that idea. But I'm just hoping I can just jack it up into that little gap there and we will see what we can do. So it's just making contact. Let's see what happens. It's 
just see what it's doing. Hmm, not very much. Right, it's not perfect, but it's a million times better than it was. So all I'm going to try and do is wedge some spaces into the frame. Oh, that's almost made to measure. Almost made to measure on this side. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to put, I've put a temporary wedge in there at the minute just to kind of stop it from dropping. And then I'll glue some proper wedges into this gap and it's worked pretty well. It's not perfect. That's about as high as I dare go because I think any more than that, it's going to put a lot of strain onto this bit of wall. But uh, if we just have a look now, it's certainly, it's a huge improvement. We're now... I don't know. We're probably about a centimetre off being level over the length as opposed to well over an inch before. So, I mean, you can see how much we've raised it by. It's a bit of a last resort kind of approach to things this, but if I take this door frame out, it's, this whole wall's going to fall down, which I don't particularly want to do. But that has fixed the problem enough that once we sort the door out, as you can see, the door, uh, I mean, it always had a giant gap on the left, but now it's got a giant gap on the right as well. So all I need to do is raise the door. I've got quite a tight gap at the bottom of this door anyway, so I've certainly got scope to raise the door a little bit. Worst case, I could add a little bit onto the bottom of the door or add a bit onto the top of the door. But either way, we have managed to level out that frame just by jacking up this side. So I'm going to try it on the other one as well. I've got the plasterer coming very, very soon, so I don't want them seeing car jacks and everything inside door frames when the pl plasterer's coming to quote. But uh, I think that'll do the job and I'll be mortaring up all of these gaps and things and gluing and mortaring the door frame in to make sure it's got a, a really good fixing. I've double checked for plumb while I was doing this as well, because if you do need to plumb the frame up, now is the time to do it uh, and as you can see that's not bad for a hundred year old house so we're pretty plumb and we're a million times more level than we were before and as I say I think that's enough that once everything's painted up and plastered and we'll get the architrave on and whatnot I don't think you'll notice it it, it is still out of level, but it's, as I say, a million times, a million times better than it was. It's not perfect, but uh, as I say, we'll see if we can do the same with this one. The problem with this side is that someone's already had a bash at repairing it. Because if we look around the other side of it, you can see this is new concrete or filler or something that's been forced into that gap. If I can get that filler out, I might be able to do the same and jack this frame up um, rather than leaving it unbelievably out of level. I mean, just you can see from the, the top of the door how far out of level this is. So it's worth doing. It's a now or never job. Uh, certainly a job to do before the plasterer comes because obviously jacking up the door frame is going to cause damage to the plaster. Anyway, I just thought it was an interesting little thing to show you. As I say, I'll fix the door frame at the top here and it'll all have new fixings put into the wall and whatnot. Obviously, there's no point in doing that until the frame is actually level. So, yeah, 
another little job off the list. Take care folks, I shall see you next time. Tatty bye. Thank <laughs> you.